Hey everyone, Gary Simon of course, Cetro, and today we're gonna take a look at the CSS grid, and I've covered this in depth in other tutorials on the channel. Make sure you check those out. You can do a search, and I'll hopefully remember to link them in the description, although I'm gonna be away on vacation, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to that. Uh, but basically, today we're gonna take a look at a really cool, 100% free web-based tool called CSS Grid, or CSSGR.ID, which is the actual URL from which you can access it there. We're gonna take a look at it shortly in the screencast, but basically it allows you to do two things. First, it's an educational tool to help you in a visual sense understand how the CSS grid works and it also provides you with the CSS code that will help you structure your layouts. So the second thing, of course, is to help save you time. So if you're not really familiar with all of the CSS grid properties, uh, this way you can actually just see all of the containers and manipulate them how you want to in an easy to use interface and then just grab the CSS grid code. All right, so we're gonna do that from scratch and we're also gonna take that code that we grab and do something in our own project just to show you how it works and how easy it is to use. We're also going to make it responsive because by default, the CSS grid properties that are shown aren't necessarily responsive. So I'll show you how to work with that as well. All right, so make sure you subscribe here if you haven't and check out Corsetro.com. So let's get started. All right, so here we are at CSSGR period ID. So just a, a unique, clever name and this is how it's set up. So over here is the preview in terms of the layout. And each one of these are just referred to as being items. And really they're just containers for content. Um, and then over here is where you control it in the property section. So we have the number of items. Of course, everything's real time here. If we wanna change this to seven, for instance, it'll automatically update. Um, the number of columns right now, you could see everything's structured in three. And also we have a grid gap, which is the space between them. And these are all just in relation um, to specific CSS grid properties. Um, so if we wanna change this, say for instance, to 50, it'll give us a nice thick amount of grid gap. And then also if you have a fixed width layout that you wanna use, you can specify here, say 1400 pixels, or maybe just so we could see it better, I'll choose 800 and you could see how it aligns up. So um, I'm just gonna remove that here. So let's say for instance, I we wanted to create a layout that has uh, seven different containers, um, but we wanna be able to fine tune them. All right, so say for instance, this item one right here, we want it to, uh, to, to occupy two rows instead of just one. Well, we can click on it and we can notice that we have this selected item property. So, Notice it says items plural right here. So we can select two. You don't have to hold shift. You just click on them and it selects them automatically. And that way you can control um, the properties of multiple selected values, assuming they have the same values over here. So the properties that you can control are based on column span. So how many columns, which is to the right, will it occupy? Let's say, okay, three. Or, and also how many rows? So if we take this back to one, and we want it to go two rows, we can see it automatically aligns everything up correctly here. All right, so I we can also fill this stuff up with lorem ipsum text if we kind of want to have a little bit more content just to see what it's going to look like. Um, and then finally, we can click get code right here, which provides you with both the HTML of this example in the background and the CSS. And as you can see, the CSS is really minimal when we're working with the CSS grid, which is really ideal. But of course, you know, the, the entire purpose of this tool is to make it quick and easy um, to, to set up in a visual manner the CSS grid, um, as well as understand how these properties work. So um, with this said, let's say for instance, um, we wanna have a little bit more of a dynamic layout. So say for here, this item right here, we want it to span all the way across. Well, we would take it and would say row span here instead would say, or, or not row span, I'm sorry, column span will be two. All right, there you go. So let's say for instance, we're happy with this current setup. Um, well, how would we go about integrating this into a web page? A very simple. So um, what we could do is choose get code and 
we'll copy all of this HTML. Now let's real quickly set up a real quick project in Visual Studio Code. All right, so I'm opened up into a new folder and in in just a folder called project. There's nothing inside of it. So create that folder and then we'll do an index.html and also a main.css. And in our index.html here in Visual Studio Code, hit the exclamation point, hit enter, some quick boilerplate, and then we'll reference our, um, our CSS file. So um, link, all right rel equals style sheet here and then href is main.css i'm not going to worry about having any type of um you know live reloading or any type of task automator um so now we take that html right here i'm going to hit Control b and then just paste this in save it we'll go back to our main.css and then right here We'll copy this stuff and we'll paste it in. So now control B, right click, reveal an explorer. I'll just go ahead and double click that. And there we go. Uh, looks ugly. So let's real quickly, just so we can visualize the containers themselves, let's go back to our main CSS and let's get out of there. And real quickly, I'll just add um, a couple rule sets. We'll do a body rule set up here. All right, so margin, we'll just say 30 pixels, and we'll have background, color, um, let's see here, RGB 240, 240, 240, just a very, very light gray. Um, and then font family to get rid of that ugly um, Times New Roman serif font, or sans serif, no, sans serif font, we'll do Montserrat, so that's one I have installed already. Um, and then, Let's see here. We're going to reference real quickly uh, the divs inside of here, the actual containers. So we can just do that with div div. Make these background colors white. And we'll add padding like 20 pixels or so inside of them. All right. So now if we go back to our uh, page here, now we can see what's happening. And this is basically exactly what we have set up right here in this section. Now, it is not responsive, obviously. So how would you make this thing responsive while using that tool still? All right, so there's just a couple considerations, but what we can do is we'll say, okay, um, we, want, uh, we want to adjust the layout of these items or these containers uh, for a tablet view or some, something like that. So um, let's just drag this in. We'll say this is around the viewport size right here that we want. And to make things simple, we're just going to change one thing right here. All we'll do is just take this and take it back from our uh, row span from two to one. All right. And then this one will make the column span three. Okay. So it's a little bit more simplified now for a kind of like a tablet viewport. So now we can go ahead and get our code and we're not going to mess with the HTML. We're just going to copy the CSS real quick. So we'll go back to our editor and create a media query right here. So we'll say media and max width, we'll say 900 pixels. And then that's where we paste in the new code. Now this is not going to work um, and that's because based on the changes that we made in the CSS grid tool, uh, it changed the HTML uh, class properties. So there's no row to and call to if we refer back to this. We can see there's just a span call three. So what do we do now? Well, we just have to simply match up um, and change the CSS rule sets um, to account for this. So, and what we'll do is go back here real quick and simply change span call three just to two. And now it should work. So if we go back here to our, um, our proje project right here, we'll refresh this. So we come in and there we go. The breakpoint happens right there. And now it's consistent with what we have in our CSS grid tool. 
So let's do this one more time just to get a little bit more muscle memory. And we'll say what about like a smartphone size, something right here. This obviously is not very effective. So we need to go down to at least two columns. Maybe we'll just make everything one. All right, so in that case, what we can do is still, we have seven items. How many columns are we gonna have? Well, let's just choose and change this to one. So now we can go ahead and select everything. All right, and now I know they say one right now for the column spam, but we need to update that and then it'll update, just change it back to, uh, to, to one again, and there you go. So now, get code, we'll see it's even more simplified. There's no classes, it's simply just the grid uh, rule set right here for the class. So now we can go back and we'll say at media, whatever I, you know, whatever you wanna use, we'll say 675, and then we'll paste this in. But right now, these this span call to and the span row to will still be applied, so it'll, it won't work. What we need to do is reset those. So we'll say span row to, we'll say grid row, that's the property that's used above. We're just gonna say auto, and then shift alt in the down arrow key, we'll replicate that, we'll just change this to call right here, that's the other class. This is a column property as seen above, and then we'll change, we'll leave that at auto as well. So now we go back, there we go, and refresh, drag this in, there you go. Here's the, the tablet size, and then finally the full size right here. All right, so hopefully you now have a new tool that you can use to help you understand the CSS grid if you have been struggling. All right, make sure you subscribe here if you haven't, and I'll see you soon.